I am sharing with you guys how to make the best healthy apple crisp. You're not even gonna know that it's healthy. Your friends won't know, your family won't know. It just tastes delicious and is made with really good for you ingredients. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe to see lots more healthy recipes. And I'm also going to link my healthy dessert ebook that is completely free that you can download so you can get lots more healthy desserts. Um, there's so many good ones in there. So I'm gonna leave that link down below in the description and I'll put it in a comment as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and make this healthy, delicious apple crisp. I'm so excited, you're gonna love it. So this is everything we are going to need in order to make our apple crisp. So I'm starting out with, of course, some apples, and I'm using four apples, they're about medium sized. I'm using Honeycrisp because they are my favorite kind of apple, but you can definitely use a Macintosh or another kind of apple. Just make sure that they are organic. Apples are part of the Dirty Dozen, so it's something that you do wanna buy organic. So I just went ahead and peeled them and sliced them up. You can definitely keep the peel on. I would say I do it about 50, 50% of the time, uh, keep the peel on or not. But peel does have a lot of nutrients, but it is a little bit more fibrous and tough in your crisp. So then I'm just separating all of the apples so they're not all stuck together. And to that, I'm gonna be adding in some apple pie spice. You can definitely just use cinnamon as well. I believe apple pie spice is a mix of cinnamon and nutmeg and clove and things like that. I'm also adding in the juice of half a lemon. This really helps to create nice soft apples. And I'm adding in some air root powder, which is one of the secrets to making a really good apple crisp. That's because it not only helps make them soft, but it also helps to absorb any kind of moisture that is released from the apples. So you don't get a watery crisp, you get really nice kind of jammy, soft, nice apples. So just go ahead and mix that until everything is coated and combined. If you don't have arrowroot, you can also use tapioca starch or tapioca flour. That also works the same way as arrowroot, but I highly recommend not skipping that step because that's how to get the best kind of fruit in your crisp so that it's still jammy but not watery. I'm putting that into a baking dish and just smoothing that out until they're all nice on the top and then we're just going to reuse this bowl in order to make our topping. This part is super easy and the ingredients in the topping are as well. So I'm using some almond flour. It's a great grain free flour along with a little bit of coconut flour added in some coconut sugar for sweetness and great unrefined sugar. It's a good staple. I get my stuff at Costco for baking. I get a lot of questions about that. Both coconut sugar and coconut oil are really good priced at Costco, so I would look there. A little bit of more apple pie spice for flavor, but again, you can use cinnamon. And I'm just gonna mix this through until it's combined. Now, I like to use the coconut oil at room temperature because it's kind of like substituting a butter in where you get the nice crumbles without it being melted. I'm adding in some slivered almonds for crunch. And another one of my secrets, and is optional, is to add in just a little bit of granola, about a quarter cup. It helps to add a really nice crunch to it. So if I have it on hand, I'll add it in. But you could definitely just add in a little bit of nuts or even two different kinds of nuts. You could do almonds and pecans. But I really find that adding in like a slivered almond or a pecan adds a nice crunch to the crumble and really helps to get that perfect texture on the top. So then either using a spoon or your hand, just go ahead and put that on the top. I find it easiest to just spread it out with my hand. That way you don't get chunks or clumps and kind of all the nuts and everything are distributed a little bit more evenly. So just sprinkle that on the top until everything is on there. And then we're gonna bake it off at 350 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes until it gets browned on the top and the apples kind of start to bubble on the sides. And it's honestly so delicious. Your house is going to smell so good. And then all you have to do is wait a little bit for it to cool off, I would say about five, 10 minutes, and then you can go ahead and serve it or have some for yourself if you're having this for a party or you're just making it for fun. So I just spoon some of that out and this would also go really well with a good dairy-free vanilla ice cream. I sometimes do that, um, especially if you're bringing this somewhere, it's gonna have a good pairing and it's just such a really good, delicious fall dessert. You could also make this into separate ones, like into ramekins, that would work well as well, but it's just honestly so delicious. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this recipe. 
It's such a good staple for the fall and winter time. I know I'm making it for my family for Canadian Thanksgiving. And so this will be up even before American Thanksgiving. So plenty of time to make it for the next coming months. We're getting into apple season. And yeah, comment down below your favorite apple. My favorite is Honeycrisp. There's just nothing better than a Honeycrisp apple. I just love them so much. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are all having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.